Welcome to Vision 48 News. I'm Emma Beck. I'm Cole Bryson. And I'm Logan Brown. The NGU community has the opportunity to of Officer Alan Jacobs, who was killed in the line of duty on March 18th. All you have to do is dine in at any area Moe's restaurant from 4 to 9 this Wednesday. All of the area Moe's are dedicating proceeds from April 6th to the Jacobs family. Vision 48 asks you to continue to pray for the family and Greenville community. The NGU Red Carpet Film Festival takes place this Thursday. The guest speaker is writer and producer Phil Cook. It starts at 4 in Turner Chapel. The film festival counts as cultural event credit, so wear your cultural event best. Tickets are not required. North Greenville's opening night of Into the Woods is less than two weeks away. Vision 48's Logan Brown brings us behind the scenes. North Greenville's theater department is putting on the musical Into the Woods in the Billingsley Theater. Here's the cast and the director to tell you a little bit about the play. So Into the Woods was written by James Lapine and Stephen Sondheim. It's based on some Grimm's fairy tales. Little Red Riding Hood makes an appearance, Jack and the Beanstalk. Um, there are a couple original characters, Baker and the Baker's wife, and there's a witch character. And they go through different quests and different journeys in the woods, they go into the woods, to find the object of their desire. But what makes this musical particularly interesting to me is it really explores the question of what happens after that. What happens after you get what you desire? What are the consequences for the choices that you've made? And was it really worth it in the end? This play has a lot of morals in it. So there's a lot of different um, things that somebody could take out of it. Uh, it's, it's just so deep and it's so, um, it, it's, it's got a huge impact, uh, I would say, on the audience and especially as, as actors, uh, there's just been things that I've learned every night from this show. Um, just family and love and portrayal and lies and just how it all ties together. Sondheim, the composer for Into the Woods, uh, it's very, very difficult music, so probably uh, it's definitely the biggest and most difficult show that I've ever worked on because, you know, with Sondheim, you, you have big shoes to fill. Um, so it's all about timing, and that's what we're doing in this rehearsal, really fixing musical timing and whatnot. Um, but it's just got this uh, really realistic yet fairy tale feel to the whole show. So it's, uh, it's very, very cool, very, but very big. It's a very demanding show. It's a musical, so you get to hear a bunch of talented musicians playing along with I like to think we're pretty talented singers um, and it's, it's very different from the normal plays we do it's just the straight plays like Shadowlands the last one we did um, and it's it's a merging of all the, the choir stuff up there and all the theater stuff down here and it's it's a it's very unique in the sense of we have a lot of people from the music building in the show with us so it's a big collaborative effort. Reporting for Vision 48 I'm Logan Brown where is North Greenville headed in the future? Just 25 minutes down the road. Vision 48's Wes Wessinger has more. North Greenville University's future in professional academic enrichment lies just one street behind Wade Hampton Boulevard. Here at 405 Lancaster Avenue, North Greenville University has recently purchased the former Ryan's headquarters in order to house its T. Brazier master's program along with its College of Adult Professional Studies. I caught up with Dr. Sam Isgett, Vice President for Adult Graduate Studies, and he discussed the new course offering, which is located in the new facility. It's a 24-month program uh, that uh, will take 20 students in our first cohort, uh, and they'll spend their first year uh, in class Monday through Friday five days a week. Uh, and then their second year, they'll go out in uh, different medical rotations and obstetrics and, and uh, 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 family medicine, psychiatry, all these different medical specialties. They'll do rotations. Uh, the, the, the PA discipline calls them clerkships, uh, but it's, it's where students uh, get exposed to actual medical practice and, and work alongside supervising doctors. In addition to the Physician Assistant Medicine program, NG will continue its current graduate degree offerings in business, education, ministry, and music education, and also its CAPS program at the new facility. 
The university's CAPS and graduate recruitment team will also relocate to the Lancaster Avenue location from the Tim Brazier Center on Pleasantburg Drive in Greenville. Officials are saying that the facility will offer many additional opportunities for university growth and will house many programs that are currently being used in other North Greenville University locations. North Greenville's T. Walter Brazier Graduate School, for example, is currently utilizing leased space in Fairview Baptist Church in Greer. Included in the acquisition was not only the office building behind me, but also 10 acres of land. 1.4 acre parcel is included with that that NGU will use for future development. So there's another acre or so uh, that comes with the, the property. Uh, um, and, and so we could build another building there. Uh, we have plenty of room to do that uh, if growth conditions warrant. Uh, and uh, th that could well happen. University officials say the graduate school will begin transitioning to the new facility at the beginning of summer and will fully be occupied by the start of fall 2016. Dr. Randall Pinnell, NGU's interim president, recently said that the building is not only in close proximity to our current graduate school, but also provides precisely the kind of space we need to continue our current graduate degree and online offerings and to carry out a high-quality, Christ-centered program in physician assistant medicine, which is set to begin in January 2017. So located here, just 25 minutes from Maine Tigerville campus, will lie the future of North Greenville University. I'm Wes Wessinger with Vision 48 News. It's Spring Fling Week here at NGU. For a complete list of activities, check out your email from Student Activities. We'll show you a recap of all the fun next Monday. The new NGU.edu launched on Monday. The Creative Marketing Department celebrated with inflatables on the Student Center lawn. Students took a break from studying to have fun with friends. The new website includes updated pictures and video of the Tigerville campus and its students. The home page is easier to navigate and has a more modern feel. Check it out at ngu.edu. If you have a habit of missing room checks, the new room check insurance might be something for you. Vision 48's Daniel Muhammad asks some of you how you feel about it. Hello, NGU student. How's your semester going? Have you heard about the new policy, the room check insurance? If not, let's see what these guys have to say about it. Um, I think it can be beneficial to students who um, may not um, be on top of their game about keeping their room clean, but for students who are responsible and will always have their room clean, it's just another $5 that they would have to pay for insurance that they don't really need. Uh, room check insurance is it's basically a way that um, students who get room check fines, um, they can place that towards their room check fine. Uh, it, it, will, it costs five dollars um, for the room check insurance uh, and then it'll cover any room check violation fine um, up to I mean usually those don't go much higher than fifty dollars at the maximum um, but if it for some reason did go higher than that that room check insurance card would cover that and it's basically just uh, you can buy it before you get the room check violation um, and it goes on uh, you can put it on after you get one, and it's just kind of in case you forget one day or something like that. Uh, it could be if you have a messy room, but hopefully you don't. I'm not sure, actually. Honestly, you know, for me personally, I wouldn't buy it. I'd just clean my room, and it would be good. But um, So it seems, seems like it might be a little counterproductive to buy something that you might not need. Yes. Um, if students frequently get fines for room check violations, instead of having to pay $25 or $30 for a fine, you pay $5 for a card and your fines go away. This is Daniel Muhammad reporting for Vision 48 News. According to NBC, documents of offshore assets of world leaders have leaked. The documents show four decades of financial activity and how dark money has flown through the international financial system. The documents leak several powerful individuals and governments to misuse of tax money and to flourishing criminal activity. Ever wonder what those weird song lyrics and your favorite songs really mean? Our social media team went out to see what students think. Hi North Greenville, I'm Courtney Woolbanks. Today with social media, we're going to scour the campus and ask different students what modern day lyrics mean to them. Before you came into my life, I missed you so bad. That's stupid. Very 
Way to go on love at first sight. I love so good, Darren. <laughs> you are so soft. If the light is off, then it isn't on. That obviously means that the light is off, it isn't on. <laughs> that sounds very unintelligible. Beats so big, I'm stepping on leprechauns. Beats, like rhythm, <laughs> or like the vegetable. <laughs> well, since it's a leprechaun, it's obviously like a St. Patrick kind of situation. So I'm figuring that someone was wearing like those like four leaf clover like beads, like the beads around their neck, and they accidentally dropped them because they were partying too hard and someone slipped and fell on them. Oh wow, those were some interesting responses. I'm Courtney Wilbanks with Vision 48 News. Back to you guys at the studio. Don't forget that you can watch all the stories you see here on YouTube. Just subscribe to the Vision NGU. We've got more news, weather, and sports coming up next. We'll be right back after this. Dude, have you gone to any hashtag cultural events? Hashtag just finished last week. Hashtag what about you? I have three left. Hashtag slacking. Hashtag you gonna go to hashtag jazz band? I don't know. Hashtag when is it? Hashtag IDK. Let's look at the new hashtag NGU.edu. Whoa, what is this? Hashtag the new website. North Greenville's women's tennis team ran the league winning streak to five for the Conference Carolinas when they took on Belmont Abbey on Saturday. It was quite a game with our Crusaders winning with a 6-3 game. North Greenville improved to 5-0 in league play and 6-6 overall. Women's tennis will travel to Mount Olive on April 8th for their next game. The men's tennis team also got a win on April 2nd over Belmont Abbey, putting them tied for the Conference Carolinas league lead. The men's tennis team is 4-0 in conference play and 6-5 overall. Men's tennis will travel to take on Mount Olive Trojans on April the 8th on, at 2 p.m. Women's lacrosse took on Chowin this past Saturday. Hannah Hawkins led the Team to victory, setting a new career goal, scoring six out of their 12 goals. The Lady Crusaders beat Chowin 12 to five, making them seven and four for the season. Women's lacrosse will play Wednesday, April 6, against Lincoln Memorial University at 6 p.m. and Friday, April 9th, against Pfeiffer University. Both games are home. Men's lacrosse suffered their fourth loss of the season to Shorter on April the 2nd. Men's lacrosse is now 4-8 and eight in their season and will travel to Belmont Abbey on April the 9th. Men's volleyball lost their sixth straight game on Saturday, April the 2nd, against Spartan College. The team lost the game after three straight sets. North Greenville led early on in each of the first two sets, but the league-leading Bulldogs pulled away with the victory every set. This loss put the Crusaders at 10 to 12 overall and 6 and 9 in the conference. Men's volleyball takes on Lee's McRae on April the 6th. The softball team lost a doubleheader lead against the undefeated Erskine College. The Lady Crusaders lost a crushing 8 to 1 in the first game, 
leaving 10 runners stranded and lost the lead in the second game with a 2-1 loss. The losses on Saturday dropped the Crusaders to 16-17 and on the season and 3-7 and in the conference. The team will be traveling to Barton College on Friday, April 8th. North Greenville's baseball team split a doubleheader with Belmont Abbey on April the 2nd. In Game 1, the North Greenville Crusaders came away with a 5-4 victory. But in Game 2, they suffered a 14-13 loss. The loss put North Greenville 27-11 and overall and 15-3 and in league play. North Greenville will host Francis Marion on April 5th at 6 p.m. Can we expect April showers this week? Our John David is ready to tell us how to prepare for this week's weather. Good day, Crusaders. My name is John David, and this is this week's forecast. We're going to start off the week with two very nice days. It's going to be a mid-60s high for both of them. Maybe a little bit chilly on Tuesday, but it'll be a lot warmer on Wednesday. What would April be without those April showers, though? We're going to see some early morning storms on Thursday, and it may get a little bit hotter later on in the day due to some humidity, um, so be ready for that. On Friday, it'll be partly cloudy, so you won't see the sun, you won't see rain, but you will see mellow temperatures and then you'll be able to get back out there be active on saturday play some sand volleyball be barefoot hang out some enos play some guitar serenade some girls whatever you want to do and that's this week's forecast back to you guys thank you for joining us all here on vision 48 news tune in again next week live at five and if you can't wait that long follow us on facebook twitter and instagram for your latest news i'm emma back i'm cole bryson and i'm logan brown see you next time ngu